a little bit later. All right, we are onto King Lear, so we are onto our single text, as you can see here, far side. This has now jumped. And this has gone from 15% to now 25% of our grade. It has also gone from 60 marks to 70 marks, okay? Which is pretty significant, okay? In that regard, this, this is, excuse me, <coughs> This is going to be one of those areas where we do need to improve in terms of our page count. Beforehand, I would have said with this, we would have had the 60 minutes to take it on. So we would have had probably, you know, five pages plus a plan and that would have been fine. Now, though, because we've got the 70, um, or we've got 100 minutes, sorry, and it's 70 marks, we are trying to get down those six pages. All right. So there's a couple of areas as we said and we can see now that we're kind of going through the leaving cert there's a couple of areas that have completely changed all right we do need that extra page i don't necessarily think we need an extra point but for a lot of us that will work out we might be a case of that we just embellish our point a little bit further okay or one of our five points so i'll have it on the board here five plus points depending on how strong or weak you are i know this sounds kind of oxymoronic or almost paradoxical in nature but the weaker you are, you might need to put in an extra point because then what happens is you have to write less on each individual point. So I would say if you can get so five solid arguments plus your half an A4 page introduction plus your kind of 10, 15, 20 line conclusion as well, I think that's, uh, you're in a very, very good space with regards to uh, King Lear, okay? A gentle reminder, there are only really four questions that you can kind of take on with regards to King Lear. I would understand fully if individuals are thinking about kind of rejecting King Lear because if you play the percentages a little bit, you know, there's only two questions here. There's six questions on the comparative. There's five questions on the studied poetry, for example. So I suppose the chances of seeing something that you like or something that you can like kind of knock out of the park are certainly smaller with King Lear. But if we play the leave insert game a little bit and we try and make predictions and things like that about what other people do will do, I would say a lot of people will get rid of King Lear. That means if you actually continue it on and write a King Lear response, the pool, again, very much like our short stories that we spoke about last week, the pool is smaller, again, a higher chance to, to get further up that bell curve. We remind ourselves that there are only four types of questions that you can get asked. Character question, relationship question or style and theme. And as we said before, they'll typically take one from here and one from here. What I would do if I were you, I would be heavily doubling down on relationships at the minute. The main relationships, obviously King Lear and then the daughters. So all the daughters, Gonro, Regan, Cordelia and the variations there, I would say KL and then obviously the loyal characters of Kent K and F there, Kent and the Fool, for example. I would be looking at Gloucester and his sons. So the original Gloucester, Gloucester and his sons. I would look at Edmund versus Edgar. Okay, good versus evil personified there. I would be looking at that as well. You could, if you like, look at Gloucester and you could look at uh, Cornwall and Regan as well in terms of Act 3 scene seven and the blinding of Gloucester. There's a lot of kind of relationships that we can look at within this. You could even go as far to look at Edmund and then his relationship with uh, Goneril and Regan as well. Why am I recommending that you look at the relationships as being the predominant factor? Because again, if you have a fair idea of those relationships, you cannot look at a character question without looking at how they interact with one another. So if you it, with one another, if you look at say King Lear, for example, in a character question, and King Lear and where does he fall on the poles of good versus evil? Well, then you will have to constantly look at how he interacts, how he speaks to, how he deals with other individuals, all right? So that's exactly how you would judge him as a character, okay? So again, that is basically the very, very similar question. That's why they don't tend to ask those two questions together or else style, and theme and if I were you I would be doubling down on style why because you cannot answer any question without having a good grasp of the stylistic techniques that exist in King Lear dramatic irony soliloquies dialogue monologue subterfuge deception imagery disguise okay props costume lighting the backdrop skein a fronds the visceral and violent elements that happen all exists within style all right, so you cannot talk about 
good versus evil. You cannot talk about appearances versus reality, for example. You cannot talk about filial ingratitude unless you have your animalistic imagery, your visceral and violent imagery, your soliloquies, etc., 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 your pathetic fallacy, etc., 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 okay? So, if I were you and you're taking on King Lear, that's what I would be doing over the next while, all right? The absolute base in terms of King Lear knowledge as well, as I've been saying to my grind students only pretty recently, 50 year grind students actually, because I was doing a tello with them. You need to jump to page seven of the notes here. If you're looking at this here and it's totally alien to you, you need to jump to page seven. You need to make sure that you know, as I said, absolute bare minimum, you need to know what these eight points on our Shakespearean plot line are and what they're called, what that means. And also then, we would have done a good chunk of work on this when we were doing King Lear. Um, what scenes are, are, I suppose, populated in these particular areas? So again, if you have a little look at page seven of the notes, just to double check my page numbers are correct. Of course they are. Our exposition, our exciting force, our Hamartia, put on the, on the board here again, put over in our vocab column, which has been a little bit barren for the last couple of weeks. Our, our Hamartia, because of our eponymous central character, while we're here, we put up eponymous on the board. Eponymous, of course, meaning when the text is named after a particular character. Hamartia being, of course, that human flaw, that fatal flaw, okay? Hamartia, I remember I said to you guys anecdotally before that um, corrected a set of exams a number of years ago. One individual ended up getting a H2 response answer. It was on a character, it was on their fatal flaws about them, be them being a tragic hero. And they had to get a H2 because the next essay that I corrected had the word Hamartia, populated their answer with Hamartia, and the one previous, the essay previous, didn't have that vocab. So they dropped out of that H1, certainly on the bell curve, they dropped down a peg, okay? Hamartia, the fatal flaw, how that would be appropriate here. But our crises, and again, there are multiple crises moments as well. You could have almost all of Act 3 up here in terms of all the different episodic moments with regards to the storm and the storm scene. Um, our tragic force, our moment of final suspense, our catastrophe and our glimpse of restored order, which takes place all in Act 5. So if you wanted to write that down, 5-2 not being a hugely uh, important scene, okay? But our moment of final suspense, the interaction between Edmund and Edgar, the only flashpoint, I will say, I'll throw this over here. So this is our moment final suspense. You have it there, guys, on, um, on page seven. The moment of final suspense, Edgar, as we said, versus Edmund, good versus evil. What I would say is this is our only, how did I describe it there a second ago, flashpoint. Because again, we remind ourselves that Shakespeare is not about big action moments. It's not about Captain America taking on Thanos. It's not about this kind of like singular willed force of good versus a singular willed force of evil. That's not what it is. It's not the big grand battles, for example. We don't even see Britain versus France or England versus France in this play. And we don't really see a huge battle between Edmund and Ga Edgar. We have ha, 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 dead, and that's what we have, because that's not, not what a Shakespeare play is about. Style, style, style. It is about the strength of the characterization. It is about the dialogue, the monologue. It's about human, the human condition and, and people, okay, relationships. But that Edmund versus Edgar is our only real flashpoint. The point I was making here, to continue on a little bit, that the Hamartia will always lead to the, leads to the catastrophe, okay? And the catastrophe is, for, a king, for King Lear certainly, is the death of everyone. Other plays, like Othello, for example, appears to be the death of most. Here, though, considering we are only left with Albany, we are only left with Edgar, everybody else is dead, including Kent, who goes to take his own life because he's following his master into the afterlife. Cordelia, Goneril and Regan, Edmund, as we said. So the only individuals left, Edgar, and then obviously Albany. And ironically here, with our glimpse of restored order, it is Edgar, the virtuous, the individual who never, never coveted the crown and simply just wanted to be the good son. And ultimately he is the one who is on the throne at the end. It is a glimpse 
We said this before, it is only a glimpse of restored order for writing in a couple of little points on page seven there. It is only a glimpse of restored order because Edmund, or sorry, Edgar rather, has that naivety. He doesn't have that nous, that kind of political nous. Certainly he is, his arc has led him to a very different space the way he was at the start versus the way that he is at the end. But he, uh, yeah, he certainly is, uh, is not the natural heir. So again, we have a feeling that Britain or the kingdom will probably descend into anarchy. Remember at the end here, guys, it is described as a gored beast. It's hollowed out. It's been completely kind of gutted. So Edgar has a lot to do in order to restore the nation as well. All right. So as I said, obviously that looks incredibly messy right now. You have it there on the notes on page seven. The absolute bare minimum in terms of taking on a King Lear task you will know that plot line and you'll know your scenes within that plot line as well, all right?